Hi everyone, this is Jennifer Escalera and I have a special guest today. Her name is Christine Howard. And Christine is a recognized and respected business leader dedicated to creating transformative products and coaching services and talks instrumental for awakening the radiance and power of women's true beauty and their ability to achieve their soul-centered calling. Her passion and commitment to inspire the lives of women came from her own transformational heartbreak. Rising from a starving diagnosis of breast cancer, followed by a painful divorce, today she is known as an expert on radiant achievement and teaches and speaks to audiences everywhere. She's found that the ways women interpret their gifts, talents, and unique qualities directly impacts their ability to manifest a powerful, purposeful, and empowered life and lifestyle. As a visionary entrepreneur and certified life coach, I'm sorry, and certified life success coach, Christine has dedicated nearly two decades guiding her clients to quickly dissolve patterns and habits that block their ability to create a life of grace and ease while achieving their highest professional dreams. For more information about Christine Howard and her work, visit her website, www.radianceawaken.com and www.mantramakeupmat.com. So welcome, Christine. Thank you, Jennifer. So glad to be here today. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. <laughs> I'm super excited to talk about the work that you're doing and just the transformational changes that um, you've experienced and how it's evolved into helping other women. Great. And if you could share with us, what was the pivotal moment of, of that changed your life? Right. Well, I actually think, Jennifer, if I think about it, there's three, there were three pivotal moments. And you mentioned two of them. Um, you know, five years ago, I was this busy wife and mom, really kind of dedicating her life to everybody else and neglecting my own needs for, for self-care and honestly for self-love. So the changes started happening when I got that first wake-up call, which was the breast cancer diagnosis. And I do look at it as a, uh, as a wake-up call. And at the time, it wasn't really a welcomed call, a wake-up call, but I was able to, through that, um, use it as um, a time to really reconnect with what was really going on in my life. And that was, I think, really the, the start of this new journey of my life. And then shortly thereafter, it was my husband deciding he was done with our 21 plus year marriage. And that really dove me even deeper into, you know, how am I showing up in my life? How, you know, this person I thought was going to be with me forever and love me unconditionally is gone. And so it, it again, took me into this even, uh, I went into an even deeper place of self-inquiry, of looking at my stories and really reconnecting to who I was, what was I about, what was I doing before I kind of gave my life away for, for everybody else. And then the third, and I want to kind of the most pivotal, was this realization that I wasn't loving myself. I wasn't owning my worth. And when I saw that clearly, and not just saw it and, and realized it in my head, but really felt it in my body, I, I took a stand for myself and I said, I'm going to love me from this day forward, you know, for better or worse, who I am now and for all my possibilities and potential. And fr really from that day forward was, um, was the turning point for me. Yeah, yeah. Those all sound very powerful. And it sounds like you had some type of knowing or intuitive ways to be able to get you to that place. Absolutely. Can you share with us a little bit about how you even knew where to ask these questions? Because some of us don't even, we're not even there yet. We're not, right. <laughs> we don't know to ask those insightful questions or right. to engage yourself in those empowered ways. Sure. What can you share with us about what got you even to that point? Right. Well, a big part of that journey through from the first, you know, that first moment to, um, to today has been, um, stopping action and getting quiet and really getting into this place of listening. 
and I, and, and then, and then writing down what's coming up and really not even being, um, approaching it with wonder and curiosity. So, you know, and you've probably experienced this. I think, you know, many women experience this. We do a lot of things. We're very, um, multi, you know, I don't want, I don't even want to say multitasking, but we can, we can handle a lot, right? We've got the home front, the career, the kids, the, uh, you know, all these different facets of who we are and what we can do. And, and then we end up getting, again, living from our head, really disconnected from our body. So for me, that thing was um, having that quiet time throughout the day to, um, to sit and listen and journal and, and journal without um, any judgment or any analyzing of what was coming up. It was purely just letting, um, whether it was my intuition, my higher self, um, you know, these nagging things that were trying to come out um, giving them the space to come out was definitely a starting point for me. Yeah. And was there a specific time or how did you make time to do that? Cause I know right. for busy moms who might be listening or watching right. are already thinking like, I don't have time to journal right. <laughs> quiet with myself. I got a baby I got to take care of or a teenager that needs to go to swim practice or something. You right. Know? So right. Well, yeah, no, that's a great question. And it, it's changed over time. But in the early days, I, I made a commitment to myself first thing in the morning, even if I had to get up a little bit earlier than who was still left in the household. It was my time I closed my door, I set a timer if I needed to, if I had other commitments for that day. But um, it was it really did become sacred time for me. And I think, actually, out of that time, um, you know, kind of when I look back, those were some of the seeds of um, where my products came from, where my radiance ritual came from. It was out of giving myself that time and that space. And I realized for me too that, you know, for my health and my mental health and my physical health, I needed to have downtime, quiet time. And so I think a lot of people don't realize how stressed they really are. And we, we get used to this certain buzz of life. Um, and for, again, just being able to take that time, um, making it a priority, just saying I'm worth it. I'm, you know, my health depends on it. My life depends on it. I knew I was in such a bad place in so many ways that, um, something had to shift and it had to start with me. So that was pretty good motivation to, yeah. to yeah. make the time in the morning. <laughs> definitely a good motivation. Right. And uh, what's one obstacle many women must overcome? I, I, from my experience and from, again, even co coaching um, a lot of my clients, I think the biggest obstacle women have to overcome is looking external for love and validation. Mm -hmm. and, and again, taking, and so the way to overcome that is taking the time to love and appreciate yourself. And again, this, is, this was kind of part of that evolution of my products and the radiance ritual that I realized I was, you know, because I was giving to my spouse, or I was giving to my children, I was giving to people that needed my help, I was kind of expecting they were going to give me that same thing back. But it was more of an outpouring and not so much the inpouring. And when I, um, you know just made that decision that I need to love myself first and foremost and everything will flow from there that um, I see that as an obstacle that many, many women um, need to overcome. Yeah. And was there anything that your body uh, was telling you or just your mental health, you know, was yeah. there anything that uh, gave you some type of indication that you were giving too much or you were getting external validation. Well, I think, you know, again, a lot of this, the, the big sign that I was giving too much and I wasn't taking care of me is when I got the cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And that, um, you know, when, when I then put myself, I did, I put myself in the self-care bubble as I called it and really went inward to say, to, to connect with my intuition, to connect with what my body was feeling and what my body was needing. And I saw, I saw then that I was, um, yeah, I was not listening to the subtle, the, um, the subtle signs. And so 
you know, the voice got louder until it manifested in, in a bigger issue. Right, right. right. Yeah. And um, what's the fastest way to break free of barriers to our creativity? I think one of the fastest things, and it may sound so counterintuitive, is quiet time, is stopping what you're doing and setting aside, you know, it could just start with a small block of time. But again, um, creativity, creativity is sourced from the inside and deep, you know, sometimes it, it gets really stuffed down. So when we're in this go, 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 do, do, do kind of life, um, we shut off our creativity. So uh, I saw this hugely in myself. And even when I work with a client, it's funny how when we're, we're in a session and you take, you're on the call for you know, an hour, 45 minutes, just that, that um, the ability to kind of shut out the world, to sit here, we, you know, we kind of do some deep breaths to get really centered and quiet you know, solutions, answers, ideas. It's so amazing how quickly things will come to us. And I experience that time and again, you know, still to this day when I take that quiet time. And, um, and so I encourage women to do that To It could be any time of the day you find the time, even if you have to go in the bathroom and lock the door, right? Like, <laughs> do it all the time <laughs> right and and then just and i think the the addition to that is not to judge what comes up to to approach it and i love using this with my clients too approach it with wonder and curiosity like i wonder what's inside me that's you know been speaking to me that i haven't been hearing or i wonder you know what this next phase is for me i wonder what um, new possibilities are available. And when you approach it with wonder and curiosity, it, um, things flow and you don't, uh, you don't shut down that, that creative, um, that creative flow. Yeah. yeah. One obstacle that comes up a lot of times for the women I work with is, well, actually there's a couple okay. that come to mind is that when they get into this idea of self-love or self-care, the automatic thought is I'm being selfish. Ah, yes. I don't know if you went through that. Absolutely. I, I that. And so what can you share about if you went from that place to that headspace, that mindset of right. I'm being selfish or I'm not being able to take care of these other people? Right. How did you it move away from that? Absolutely. I love that you bring that up because that was absolutely me. And if I could, if I were to add another transition, you know, like a significant moment of, of ch change in my life, it was when I had kids and, you know, I was a career woman before that I was in corporate America. I, uh, you know, worked at fortune 500 companies and I had a career and I was going places and doing things when I became a mom and my husband's career started taking off. It was like, I want to be home with the kids. That was important with you know, to me to raise the kids. And I see how I almost, you know, that pendulum swung a little bit, you know, maybe too far because I was acting upon what the story I saw, how my mom was. And it was, she was there for us, you know, unconditionally, you know, 24 seven. So, so I definitely had some very, very deep beliefs about, oh, women who do this are, are selfish or doing that is, is selfish. It took, it did for me take, um, my cancer diagnosis for me to realize that it's uh, it's not selfish and and it you know again that perspective that mindset so if we look at it as yeah we're we need to really be it comes down to this we need to be our own best friend mm -hmm. you know I can sit you know we can sit here talking to each other and and I can encourage you you can encourage me we could say yes you're worth it you need to do this you need to take care of yourself. But do we have those conversations with ourselves? Mm. Right? Oh, that's beautiful. Ooh. Yeah. So, so if, you, if you make that shift to say, I, I need to be my own best friend, how would you speak to your best friend? And you would absolutely say, take a nap if you need a nap. You know, hire a babysitter if you need two or three hours to work on your dream project, right? And, and I know for me, if I look back at with my kids, there definitely were those moments where I was showing up in a, 
a place of anxiety or frustration or anger, um, like that underlying current where I couldn't be fully present with them. So I guess, you know, for a mom who is, is navigating this right now, just to maybe even think when you're with your kids, are you fully present with them or are you distracted because you're tired and, um, that can help you to maybe again, make that shift to, yeah, self-care will help not just me, but my relationships with my kids and, and family members and even in my, um, my business life, if they work outside the home. Yeah. That creativity. I love that. And I think, I would encourage anyone um, who's watching this or listening to this as an exercise to sit quietly and start having that conversation with yourself. And what does that look like? What do, what do you hear? Absolutely. So after you watch this or listen to this, see if you can just take five minutes, get quiet, breathe, and see what comes up for you. See what shows up, see what you might hear. And use that as some guidance to encourage you to continue practicing the things that we're talking about today. And that's really about your ultimate uh, ability to love yourself. And the more that you go into your inner world, into, excuse me, into your inner being, the more you can give. The more you can give to the world and to your relationships as well. I, I think it's so enriching for us to be able to start inward. We're taught in our society that we as young girls, this was the other obstacle that I was gonna talk about, was that we as young girls, we're taught that we're the ones who are supposed to be proper and mm -hmm. everything, you know, we're, we unconsciously or we're just given these uh, maternal type of roles already as young girls. And so we're conditioned in our society to grow up thinking like, oh, we're supposed to be doing everything for everyone. And we don't really get um, guidance as young girls. Right. To understand, no, like there's, there's a voice inside of you. There's someone who lives inside of you and you need to understand her before the rest of the world. Mm hmm. Well, and I think the thing that comes up for me when I hear you speak is, is um, the term like authentic giving and how we can give because we feel this is what we are supposed to do versus giving authentically, which is more connected with, um, you know, our higher self and loving and just genuine love versus obligation and duty. Mm -hmm. And when we come from that place of love, it's it includes loving ourselves. So I think it kind of, again, can shift the dynamics of, of how we give. Yes, exactly. So part mm -hmm. of that, of being able to give, um, with the experience that you've gone through, um, you've created, you've manifested, you've transformed some of your, your pains and adversities into transformational giving right yes you created products can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing and what these products are and absolutely i'd be happy to so the first product was one of those things that came out in that quiet time of journaling and i i did i became an observer of my life and um just started noticing things so i, I noticed my morning um, you know, beauty routine was, and this is kind of the functional side of my product, but I had a white count, tile countertop and I was making, I didn't wear a lot of makeup, but I kind of made a mess. So I was using a um, paper towel and then I started thinking, well, what if I create something fabric? So I journaled about it and, and over time I was sharing with a girlfriend and she said, you need to, now's the time, Chris, you need to make this happen. And, and I just felt like, yes, this is the time. And so the product, what it became was a, a way while you're doing your beauty routine and think about it. If we look, you know, we're looking in the mirror and we don't have any makeup on, maybe we still have the sleep in our eyes, our hair's a mess. And most, a lot of times those times can be times of criticism and we're finding that, that new wrinkle or we're seeing this age spot. And, and I noticed that for myself. So, you know, I was at this point where, um, when my husband left, I didn't feel beautiful. I felt, 
you know, um, un unlovable. I felt ugly. And I, I knew that wasn't the, my truth, but that's how I was feeling in the moment. So kind of pulling in these ideas from the journal, I decided to create a, an inspiring product that I can use in my morning routine that has mantras on it. And then with the, um, you know, kind of keeps my countertop clean, but then it's uplifting. So I started hand stenciling just even the first ones that said, I am a natural beauty. And I really needed to reconnect to, you know, that inner beauty that I, that I had. So as I, you know, went on this journey of saying, you know, taking a stand for me and saying, I, I feel this idea. I, it's bringing up my creativity. I'm really connected with the message. It's, it's uplifting for me. I can see how it can help other women. I'm going to bring this to reality. Um, you know, I started working and sharing the product ideas with different people in it. The product just started coming to life. And so right now I sell nine different designs uh, themed around beauty, empowerment, faith, and dance. And each one has, um, the color means something, the design was, you know, kind of really intentionally created. They're all made here in San Diego County and they're organic. So I was very much about, you know, sustainability and nature. And, and so the product I created and it was awesome and I loved it. And I felt like I knew something was missing. And that was how do we I didn't want it to be a product that just sat on your counter and looked really pretty. I wanted it to be to women to interact with it, for it to be, you know, kind of come to life for them. And that's when the radiance ritual, or one of the reasons and ways the radiance ritual came to be was um, how can we take, you know, two minutes to transform how we show up for ourselves and, and thus transform how we show up in our life. And the Radiance Rituals, Five Simple Steps, that I, I like to say allows you to um, connect with and awaken your true essence and your inner beauty. And it's also, I say, give two minutes to yourself before you go out and give to the world. So um, again, it was just one of these things that I, I just breathed into it and let it unfold. But it is a beautiful product for women, for themselves, and for, for, for women that they love to say, um, you know, you're important, and taking that time to really connect with your inner beauty, your essence, your gifts and your talents, and to really give yourself a dose of self-love before you go out and start your day uh, has been um, transformative for me and many of the women that I hear from that are using the product. Yeah, that's so awesome. I love yeah. it. So Thank I met Christine at a retreat a few months ago and we were getting to know each other and she shared with me her, um, her radiance product. And I was like, oh my God, this is such an amazing idea. Like, how come this hasn't been invented before? <laughs> well, right. About this. this is so amazing. This is so awesome. Right. Well, and I think we are in such a, a beautiful time right now of women taking that pause, right? And we're, I'm seeing more and more inspirational kinds of products and, uh, you know, rituals. You're hearing, I'm hearing the word ritual all the time now, which again, I love that because it's, we're waking up more and more women to understand the power of ritual in their lives. And um, I'm happy to be, yeah, part of uh, that inspiration. Yeah. And so the idea is, this mask, this, um, it, it's, um, a mat, it's a mat. Yeah. It's a mat. I'm sorry. I said mat. <laughs> this mat, um, you, you, um, have these different mantras on it. Right. You spend at least two minutes doing, creating some type of ritual for yourself to help improve or to create that self-love energy. Right. You just place the mat on your counter and you look at it or where yes. do you put it? Like, well, I, I've actually had women do it m multiple ways. My initial intention was you put it on your bathroom counter or wherever you do makeup. Now I've had, you know, women say, I have a small countertop. I don't have room. So they've hung it on their mirror in their bathroom. Or I've got um, a couple gals that have meditation altars. They, they have it at their meditation altar and they will read the mantra 
when they sit down to meditate. A um, couple other women have hung it on the wall as a wall hanging. So, so what, what, wherever makes sense for you, but yes, it's, it is this um, taking the, those two minutes to connect with yourself. And yeah, it is, it is a, a dose of self-love and it helps to build your confidence and your self-esteem. And, and one of those steps is for you to acknowledge um, something you love about yourself. And it's all, all this, the five steps are really, they're all done in the mirror. So for some women who have not uh, looked at themselves in the mirror lately, from a perspective of loving themselves, it can be a little bit awkward in the beginning. But you know, imagine looking at yourself in deep in your eyes and saying, "I love that you in whatever it is." You know, I love that you are so committed to, you know, uh, your dreams and your goals, or to staying connected to what's most important to you. What, whatever that is, there's so much power in naming and you know, looking in your eyes and naming something that you love about yourself. So it's, it's a very interesting process. <laughs> right, right, right. So the importance of this ritual is to help um, to create that sacred time for you to begin to find that self-love, being able to yes. love yourself and seeing the beauty, not just in that, you know, Cosmo type beauty, but just right. the beauty of the essence of your soul. And right. Right. And think about it. We're all, we all come with gifts and talents, right? And we can, you know, show up in the world based on, oh, I should do this or I ought to do that or, you know, the have tos. But when, when you look in the mirror and you start to reconnect with that authentic part of you, that, you know, um, whatever that is, again, like, you could be this really generous person or this really funny person or a great dancer or, you know, whatever it is, saying and connecting with that, your authentic self, your essence mm -hmm. is, uh, is definitely what it's all about. Right. And how does starting the day like this create more success and more love in your life? Right. It does it because when you, it really sets the tone for the day is what I like to say, right? So if you imagine getting up and again, rushing through your day versus getting up, you know, pausing for a couple minutes, acknowledging yourself, really getting grounded and centered, you're, you're shifting how you show up in your day. And when you connect, um, but I've again, seen for myself and in talking to other gals, connecting with even for that moment every day but it's like you know things you do what you do repeatedly is what's going to affect your life it's not that you know i'm not going to eat a salad once in a in a month and expect to be healthy right it's like i'm eating good stuff throughout the day it's like this this is this is kind of soul food it's it's uh inner beauty food it's true beauty food yeah, and it, yeah and so when when you go when you connect with yourself first thing in the day and then you go out in the world with this grounding right and this this um and i feel it in my body and i when i when i teach the ritual i tell women to like that compliment you give yourself what you acknowledge yourself for feel it in like every fiber of your body this is not a mental exercise it's a it's a body exercise so it it shifts your energy it shifts your um, you know, how, how, what, what you think. And so you go into your day and you've kind of have a new awareness about who you are and your, your worth and what's important to you. So it's easier to say no to stuff. It's easier to say yes. You find you have a little more courage to speak up in a situation because you're, you've, you're building that muscle of self-love and, and self-worth and self-esteem and, and again, reconnecting with those gifts and, it creates that momentum then to bring those gifts out into the world. Absolutely. And then yeah. for all women who are at different stages of their self-confidence or self-worth, totally. it isn't just for someone who has no self-worth or who's very right. focused on themselves. This is for even the most confident woman. And totally. because it gets to a point, like I think to, um, there isn't enough information out there to let these women know who have who are barely starting the work that mm -hmm. once you have uh, created an awareness of your self-worth and your self-love, 
you don't just stop here. Like you have to. No, that's when the real work begins because now you have to go out, right? And right. you have to start showing up like exactly. in that moment saying no or saying yes or saying I am worthy to someone that maybe you've struggled to, um, you know, to set boundaries with in the past. Exactly. So, definitely. So th this mat is the mantra makeup mat, right? Yes, correct. Um, how, if women are interested in purchasing this, how would they be able to, to find this? Yes, I have an online store at www.mantramakeupmat.com and you can uh, order it online. Um, yes, and I want to add too, the, um, so one of the other creative things that came out of me this past summer was an idea to create some t-shirts. So the, the t-shirts, I don't know if you had, I think it might've been, I might not have launched them yet when I met you, but the, the t-shirts are so fun because the, um, they're spin off of the mats, but I, I like to say, um, encourage women to take mindful moments throughout their day. So the t-shirts are printed, the design on the front is pr printed reverse and backwards. So when, if you were looking at me, you might not be able to really read the message, but it's, it's meant for me or the wearer to read in the mirror. So, you know, as women, how many times are we in the bathroom throughout the day or we're, you know, coming in a, a door that has a window or we're passing a window and we catch our reflection. Yes. So that, um, that's the, mode, you know, kind of the impetus behind that is to help women to have these mindful moments throughout their day to reconnect with themselves. And they're super fun to wear and, um, and that is also something um, that I'm selling on my website. Awesome. And is that at makeup, uh, mantra makeup mat. You can get to it through mantra makeup mat.com under the shop tab. There's uh, makeup mats and then t-shirts. Um, I do have a separate website for that right now also, but it's probably cleanest just to go through the mantra makeup mat website. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. I definitely encourage everyone to get one. They're super amazing. And um, if they want to contact you directly and learn more about you or yes. ways to work with you, uh, what's yes. the best way to, to reach you? They can uh, reach me through Chris at mantramakeupmat.com. Awesome. And to continue seeing what Christine is up to, you can visit her website at www.radianceawaken.com. Well, yes. Thank you so much, Christine, for your time. This has been super fun, and thank I love you. everything about this, and I can't <laughs> wait for these women to get your products. Thank you, Jennifer. I so, uh, yeah, so happy to have chatted with you today, and yeah, shared my story, and um, I agree. I love, uh, love the synchronicity between our messages. Absolutely. Everyone have a great day, and talk to you soon. Bye. -bye. Bye.